Welcome fellow wine lovers, this is the Wine Ghost Podcast. I'm Mate Vash, a certified sommelier and seeker of hidden stories behind the most mysterious drink in history. If you have any questions about the topics we mentioned during the shows, please look for the Wine Ghosts on Instagram, where you can send your questions and responses via direct messages, or just leave a comment under the episode's post. You can also find easy ways to get in contact with our guests and follow their stories. But now, please grab a glass get comfortable and listen how today's ghosts get out of the bottle. Today's ghost is Viola Albrecht from the Albrecht Gisling Winery, Heilbronn, Southern Germany. Viola is a young, energetic member of a long-standing winery family, well, actually two families, but I let her connect the roots under their vines. She explains us why the wines of the Württemberg wine region are out of most iron experts' radar and how she plans to change that. She gives a deep introduction into the terroir of the region and their awaited future, partly due to the climate change. Viola was also kind enough to pour us five different but fascinating wines while sitting in that gorgeous tasting room facing a giant painting of a proud lion. I hope you enjoy this loose but informative conversation about the wine region and winery you should definitely put on your radar in the future. Viola, welcome to the show and thanks for the invitation and thanks for the thanks for the hosting. I'm really glad to be here in uh, Heilbronn and how are you today? Yeah, nice to have you here. Yeah, I'm looking forward for the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, well, one of the main reasons, uh, because I wanted to interview you or I visit you, because I've been here a couple of months ago and I was really impressed by the by the winery and uh, hospitality of your mother, for example. And also I really liked how the place looked and the design and uh, really the, the philosophy and the long history behind uh, the wines, the labels. Can you maybe a little bit um, like talk about the family history? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, we are very proud of our history. Yeah, um, as you uh, can imagine, um, our winery is called Albrecht Kisting, so there are two names in it. And my mother is birth. My mother's birth name is Kiesling, and my father's name is Albrecht. So our, our family name is Albrecht. Okay. Yeah, but um, these were two businesses. Albrecht family is uh, when you. Um, Look at our history. Yeah, it is an old um, family of Heilbronn. Yeah, in former times, in the Church of Heilbronn, there were all the priests um, in the yeah in the church, and Albrecht was one of um, of them. Yeah, there were seventeen priests in the church, so it's very 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 old um, family of Heilbronn, mm -hmm. and the um, wine making or the um, growing of wine started in the 15th century of the Albrecht family. And Kiesling is one of the pioneers in Württemberg. I would call that a pioneer because <laughs> in former times in Württemberg, um, the structure were different. We had 100% cooperative in Württemberg. Mm -hmm. So there were um, the um, grape producers and they delivered the grapes to the cooperative and they um, made all together wines and um, uh, con contributed them all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Kiesling, my grandfather, was one of the first um, um, winemakers of Württemberg, together with um, Gerd Aldinger and five other um, winemakers. So they decided to uh, um, exit the cooperative mm -hmm. and um, because Maybe. they sa said um, they uh, make such um, effort and um, good quality in the mm -hmm. vineyards and um, produce good grape quality. And they wanted to um, hold their own product in their hand. So they were very proud of their grapes. So they decided to make their own wines. And so he founded, um, Gerhard Kiesling was my grandfather's name, um, his own winery and um, made all the steps for his own, like he growed, uh, he were growing the wines mm -hmm. and um, produced the grapes and um, made uh, the vinification for his own, uh, the whole analogy part okay. and um, the contribution. And so, yeah, he was one of the first yeah, in the 1980s. 
it was the time where the first um, wineries um, founded in Württemberg. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the history goes back to uh, the 17th century. Wow. Yeah. They were the same vineyards as now or the same places? I think the winery um, were growing with time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, some sites are the same now, but um, yeah, we got more sites and more um, fields and um, yeah, so we grow, were growing in Hector. Mm -hmm. And then the Albrecht family um, um, gave his um, uh, its hectares to, uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> to the total. <laughs> yeah, to the total. And then, yeah, yeah now we are a big family uh, um, business, I, I guess. Yeah, for our region. Yeah, in Württemberg, mm. the average of a um, winery has like 12 hectares of okay. uh, vineyards. And we cultivate <clears throat> at the moment 15 hectares um, mm -hmm. of um, vineyards. Yeah, the listeners don't see where we are actually. We are in a beautiful tasting room. And uh, we have a long table here and an old gravity press, actually. The listeners should um, come here once. <laughs> <laughs> At least. But, um, yeah, we describe it um, for sure. Um, here we are in our um, noblest um, tasting room of our winery. It's um, brand new. Yeah, um, We um, built up a new building last year, 2018. And um, yeah, to... Um, invite more customers to our winery. And this tasting room is uh, dedicated to our premium um, red wine. It's um, of the site um, Löwenherz, so we call it Löwenherz room. And um, all the furniture um, has um, a relationship to wine. <laughs> and the table is made out of an old um, wine press. In former times, we had wooden presses um, out of a big oak trees and we um, pressed our grapes in the wooden basket um, with the weight of an oak tree and yeah our desk is or our table is made out of an uh, of such a tree which was used for pressing grapes so you see there are little holes in it where um, yeah all the metal parts of the um, press um, was in former time and um, yeah we were very lucky to uh, get this table it's uh, made for us especially and um, yeah and also where we are actually we are next to next to Hebron but uh, at the at the very edge of the town right where the where the Weinberger where the uh, vineyards begin all your vineyards are behind us where where are really the 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 production site and how close it is to the vineyards yeah we are um close to the um, hill Wartberg. Yeah, this is um, kind of the symbol of the town yeah, in mm -hmm. the northeast um, of Heilbronn situated. And um, yeah, Wartberg is one of the best sites of Württemberg. Yeah, okay. It's south waste and mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have um, a lot of uh, sun, sun mm -hmm. expression and um, yeah, it's um, a perfect site for our um, variety Lemberger. Mm -hmm. But in former times it um, all the um, rich people from Heilbronn, they invested in this hill. So um, the sites belong uh, um, to um, industrial people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we own little parts of it, little parcels of mm -hmm. the hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have two uh, other sites um, in Heilbronn. It's Stiftsberg, it's a direction Neckarsulm and uh, Stahlbühl. It's on the east um, of Heilbronn. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are our three sites uh, which we cultivate in Heilbronn. And all the vineyards are very close. Yeah. We can reach them easily. And that's um, the most important thing for us. In former times, the winery was in town. Yeah. And so in 1967, my grandfather moved out of town. Yeah. And that was um, a big um, goal for us because now we are immediately in the vineyard. So where the most important um, work is to do for us <laughs> yeah. and also i think it's a big advantage right at the harvest or you can pick the grapes and yeah. uh, really deliver it really yeah, fast we, right? we can expand here we mm -hmm. have a um, place a space and mm -hmm. that's uh, so important for us and when we can be a little bit dirty and um, yeah. <laughs> noisy yeah, and no one complains and yeah. that's um that's like because yeah, yeah during the harvesting time yeah there's a lot of um, noise and um what are maybe the key differences between these three styles in terms of maybe exposure or soil 
or or sizes or what what would you say are the key differences yeah the Wartberg site is uh, the best site for our red wines mm -hmm. yeah it's south exposed and um, it's a little bit drier actually yeah and and um, we need to plant varieties which um, can resist dryness so it's f perfect for Lemberger yeah it's not so good for the Pinot varieties mm -hmm. um, uh, a better um, site for them is Stahlbühl and Stiftsberg and these are our um, sites for our white varieties and it's yeah. because they are a little cooler or yeah they are cooler and not south faced um, mm -hmm. yeah and um, yeah every site we have 15 um, hectares of uh, vineyards but on 40 different um, little parcels okay. yeah we have only three sites but um, we are very small structured yeah and um, we uh, as wine freaks we know our parcels and know <laughs> there's a lot of wind going and we can plant varieties which are in danger to rot um, when it comes to the harvesting time yeah so we know for each parcel which variety is the best and that's i think the most important knowledge for a winemaker yeah to know your um so uh, your exposure of the vineyard and um, mm -hmm. the microclimate and um, if there's wind going or yeah and um, yeah you can't say it in general our soils are not so diverse like in the Palat area or, mm -hmm. or in other wine growing regions of Germany they are we have a lot of um, kalk in our soil so very calculous and it's good for the Pinot varieties, but um, also for Riesling and um, Lemberger. And Württemberg in general is famous for its um, variety, uh, for uh, its diversity of um, varieties. Yeah, we have a wide range of different varieties. And in other wine growing regions, they are specialized in Riesling yeah. or specialized in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, our wine growing region is also. Um, popular or famous for its um, red wines yeah, and that's very special in Germany because um, yeah, we are known for our white wines and cool climate area in general Germany but our um, town Heilbronn is together with Freiburg um, these are the hottest areas of um, mm -hmm. our region. The Schwab and Toscana they also say right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we are different and um, we don't have to call it. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> That's true. Toscana. And also maybe tell us about the grape varieties because you also mentioned Lamberger, which is a kind of entrenched in Württemberg, right? Or it's not really common elsewhere in, in Germany. Yeah, Lamberger is our most um, important variety in our house and in Württemberg, I would um, say, because um, Lamberger is big bodied but very, very fruity. Yeah and it can um, stand dryness and it uh, loves um, sun yeah and uh, we have um, a very hot climate here in our region so it's um, good for Lemberger and a synonym for Lemberger is Blaufränkisch and the origin of the variety is in Slovenia, Hungary mm -hmm. um, yeah. and it came a long time ago to Württemberg um, so we call it our traditional variety here because it's so long here and it adopted very well and um, yeah it's perfect for our sites here in our region and another important variety is Trollinger of course but it's very light a light red wine and you can chill it a little and drink it as a rosé mm -hmm. wine because you can um, um, get a lot of yield out of the vineyards and um, so it's um, the grapes are very big you can get um, one kilo of one grape so um, um, and the berries are very big so it's a very uh, it's a lot of also juice light there, right? in color mm -hmm. yeah because um yeah the pulp is uh, without color and only uh, the color mm -hmm. is um, located in the skin of the berries so and the skin is also a bit uh, very thin yeah. yeah and um but um, in former times um we drank um, wine the whole day through. Yeah, we drank it for lunch, for dinner, and <laughs> the good um, old days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we drank it in a, um, a quarter liter um, glasses, and mm -hmm. it was um, better than water because it was pure. Yeah, with water you were in danger to uh, get sick because there could be yeah. a bacteria or something <laughs> inside. 
yeah so it was a light red wine with not so much alcohol and um yeah it was um easy drinking wine and uh, you can't um put it in the range with the other red wines and compare it to the other red wines because it's a completely different um wine in style yeah and they also plant um trollinger in the um Alto Adige region in the, the north of Italy, and um, there they call the variety the Natch. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and also um, in, in Austria, Schiava. I yeah, Schiava. Yeah, yeah, and also in, in Trentino, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's called the slave, it's the meaning in, it, in Italy. Yeah, because I'm not sure, yeah, because <laughs> I think when you pick the grapes, you have to carry a lot of weight with you. <laughs> in then your you bucket. are the slave, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are the slave. <laughs> Yeah, and the problem is that um, some winemakers, uh, viticultural viticulture, they take a lot of yield, and um, that's why the image of the wine is um, not so good in our region. And yeah, so I would, um, I prefer Lemberger, and uh, you drink it um, to other, um, I don't know, in other situations. And Lemberger is big bodied, and you have the blackberries and you have mm -hmm. a fresh cherry fruit in the nose and mm -hmm. fire on your plate and um, yeah very spicy Lemberg is um, is very nice yeah. or, or what, what you would you pair it to maybe from the region or you can pair it to Rostbraten that's a typical okay. um, piece of meat in our region and it can be a little bit bloody yeah mm -hmm. in the middle and um, yeah I think this is fine or to our Traditional meals here, yeah. Linsen mit Spätzle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And also, you have a lot of Spätburg in there, right? Like Pinot Noir suits the region as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that or the, the characteristics of the variety here? Yeah. Pinot Noir is um, yeah, part of the Pinot family and it's a red grape variety. Um, you have more the plump fruit in the nose and it's um, a completely uh, different wine in style. Um, you have more the um, light um, red berry fruits um, in it. Yeah. And it's not so deep in color. Yeah, it's a very light in color. And you can also chill it a little bit and uh, it's a very, very elegant wine. Yeah. And I call it, it's a little bit a diva in the vineyard because you um, have to do a lot of effort to uh, get good quality. Yeah. You have to um, um, care um, about the grapes a lot that um, yeah, they don't um, get rotten in the end. Because um, like the name Pinot says, it comes from, the, from France. And um, yeah, in France, the grapes, they look like um, the fruits of the pine tree. So that's um, yeah, the... The relation to the name mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we have very very um, little grapes with very little berries yeah and um, the berries are very compact um, on the grape and you have to uh, make sure that um, no juice bursts out that um, you don't um, get infections in the grape yeah so you have to uh, look um, to make sure that um, wind goes through the grapes and um, it's you very have sensitive to take to mold, some, right? yeah, mm -hmm. it's very sensitive and also you have a thin um, skin in the, at, yeah, no, not like Lemberger. It's, it's completely different. You have to treat it completely different, and you have to remove some leaves um, around the grapes that um, no water stays in mm -hmm. uh, close to the grape that you have no infection in the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, but when you do well in the vineyard and you choose the right time to pick the grapes, you can make very, very elegant wines out of um, Pinot Noir. And you have to um, choose good sides, of course, yeah, and a little bit cooler ones, but with a lot of light. And Pinot Noir needs a lot of water in the ground, yeah, yeah, it can't stand dryness, yeah. So you have to be sure that the site where you plant it um, has um, a good. Um, water excess or yeah yeah <laughs> that's important yeah and i really really like spätburgunder um yeah it um, that's that's the nicest part of um winemaking that you have so many different styles and different wines in the <laughs> end yeah and we have um our um variety in our region which um is only um, 
which you only can find here around Heilbronn is Samtrot, and it belongs to the Pinot family as well. And it's a mutation of Pinot Meunier. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's a little bit um, the small sister of um, Pinot Noir, I would. <laughs> How would you characterize maybe Samtrot? Pinot Meunier is, um, I don't know, the image is not so good of Pinot Meunier. Pinot Meunier is also part of the Champagne um, blend. And it's a very elegant wine um, in general, but um, I think the German name for it, Schwarz Riesling, it is not very good chosen. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's the sound of the name is not very nice and it um, sounds not elegant at all. <laughs> but yeah, and in the vineyard, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, because uh, Pinot Meunier is growing like a bush. Yeah, you have to. Uh, um, remove a lot of um, shoots and leaves and um, yeah, I don't so know, manage the draining mm -hmm. system. Yeah. And um, Samprot is a mutation out of um, Pinot Meunier because um, a synonym for Pinot Meunier in our region is the Müller variety. Müller means like um, the one, uh, um, the profession um, to make flour. Yeah. So um, the leaves of the Pinot Meunier have like um, a lot of hairs on them. So you see the Pinot Meunier vineyard from far away because um, it looks like um, with um, flower on top, yeah, with a lot of hairs on the leaves. And then there were some wines in the vineyard which um, had not the um, hairs on the leaves. And then they um, selected these wines and um, grew it in a separate vineyard and um, so the Samtrot variety was founded or established mm -hmm. or yeah, found uh, yeah, in the end. And Samtrot um, um, means the name Samtrot um, is in English velvet. So it's very smooth in tannin. It's, it's very yeah, hand, a handsome wine, I would mm -hmm. say, because um, yeah, it's a very light wine. Um, and the taste, um, you can put it in between Pinot Meunier and Pinot Noir because it has not the strength of Pinot Noir, but it's a little bit more elegant than Pinot Meunier. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. So it's like a child of them, really. It's... Yeah, and we, we, are only, uh, we have only uh, less than 400 hectares of Samtrot in our region and you can't get it anywhere else. How would you maybe distinguish in terms of winemaking these varieties? We have um, a quality pyramid. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. These okay. are wines with character. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this is our premium um, range, and um, we give all our premium wines um, names. So uh, these are little brands for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Löwenherz Privatkeller, and then we have the daughters of the winery, mm -hmm. Viola, Johanna, and uh, Luisa. Um, this is the premium line. And then we have um, our basic line. These are the Gutsweine, like the VDP um, mm -hmm. names them. And then we have our Originale. This is the, um, the segment in between. And um, there you can find um, varieties and wines um, which um, show, um, represent the region very good. And um, yeah, the traditional varieties, and they are a little bit big body than the good Gutsweine, than the basic So wines. these are the Ortsweine, would you say? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can compare them to the Ortsweine. Mm -hmm. But um, we would have only one Ortsweine because we only have vineyards in Heilbronn and around Heilbronn. Mm -hmm. Be that's why the system of the VDP um, is not, um, suit, yeah. Yeah, does not yeah. um, fit to us. Mm -hmm. and, in the end, so we established our own system. So we have Gutsweine, Originale and Charaktere. And um, a part of that, um, we have our sparkling wines and um, our little um, quality wines. Um, this is, um, these are the simplest wines, which you can mix up with water and make surely. That's yeah. a very typical <laughs> thing in our region too, yeah. <laughs> can we maybe go back to the Pau de Pé because outside of Germany, maybe a lot of people would say that or would think that so these are the best wines of germany and these are the best which you should try before you die so to say but you just said that maybe you wouldn't choose to enter the vdp because it doesn't the system doesn't fit your profile actually or your purposes of distribution i really like the vdp um, 
wineries and they do a, a good job for German wine in general. Uh, they have a good um, image and um, they do very well in quality, of course, and um, there are strict um, um, controls of the quality which they produce and um, they are yeah, I um, did an apprenticeship after I graduated high school and went to another wine growing region to the Palate area or the Palatina area, the Pfalz area, Pfalz, that's the German mm -hmm. name for it. And there I worked at two, di two different VDP wineries. I really like um, how they work and um, I support um, their work. And um, But for me, it's not my goal to uh, become a VDP winery because, um, like you mentioned, the system is not um, good for us or we can't have Ortsweine and Lagenweine because we are very limited in sites. A cause for that is that um, our system was 100% um, cooperative um, companies in former times and um, that the logistic is not complicated for them. They uh, um, put it all the little sites together to big sites. So uh, that's why we have no more so many sites in our region. Yeah, and we, we are very limited in sites. So when you call your best wines, um, Wartberg, Stiftsberg, Stahlbühl, uh, you have no more other options for the other wines and you can't build up uh, your pyramid in the end mm -hmm. or your quality um, system. And so that's why in our region, it's very hard to uh, um, follow the system of VDP. But, um, good for the customer and um, yeah, a transparent system which um, everyone can understand in the end. And so we have um, kind of a system like them, yeah, but um, we use different adjusted. names for it. Yeah. Yeah, we adjusted a little bit um, what was possible for us. We were already talking about this before the recording, but I just want to go back uh, to this because I think it's important that uh, Württemberg or Baden and yeah, in general, Württemberg, I think it doesn't have the biggest fame in the German wine world or out of the German wine regions. And can you maybe tell us some reasons why it should be? Because from the terroir perspective, it would deserve more probably. And also from the heritage side, only just looking at your family. I think um, it's because um, of our history. The people from abroad, they say, in former times, um, the people in our region, they drank um, the wines from our region and then um, we had no more wine. So um, we have a big population in our region and a lot of um, big towns, so a lot of customer pot yeah, potential customers. And it's the easiest way to um, deliver, to con distribute the wines um, in the region. It was not necessary for us to go abroad. And so... Um, our region is not known abroad because um, we were not eager to um, establish um, distribution, <laughs> distribution yeah. abroad. But um, nowadays, um, with the globalization, everything changes and um, the consumer um, thinks different and is acting different. So we have to adopt to the modern system. Or So um, now the young winemakers, they have to... Uh, build up or create a better image for the Württemberger wine because um, the cost is not the quality and that the quality is not um, as good as the quality abroad in other wine growing regions. We have such good wineries and um, yeah, but um, we need to uh, do a lot for better image <laughs> in future. But I think uh, it's changing at the moment. Yeah, we do very well. History of Heilbronn, maybe it also plays a part, right? Because it was really heavily bombed after the Second World War, or in the Second World War, and they had to reap also some vineyards were damaged, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Heilbronn was totally um, destroyed um, after World War II. Um, you could um, compare our town to the Heidelberg town, yeah, when you um, knew how it looked before. Um, yeah, and um, we have a saying. Schaffe, schaffe, häusle baue. So our, the people in our region, the mentality is um, that they are very eager to uh, build up the town uh, or rebuild the town very fast. But um, yeah, different, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had a lot of sandsto houses out of sandstone and allowed a lot of houses which were made um, 
um, out of wood and so you can't um, build it up like this yeah and um, yeah they needed um, places to live and um, yeah, it had to be very fast um, mm. to be done very fast so um, yeah we have some houses which are left from um, the time um, before World War II um, an example for that is the Wein Villa um, it's a little it's a big um, house out of sandstone and um, it's an yeah, you should go there once. There's a good restaurant inside and okay. um, good gastronomy. And you get um, um, wines of 15 different um, wineries and a cooperative, of course. Um, in that house, um, you have a big range of different wines. And um, you can, it's like a museum. You should uh, a little bit go around and see the different rooms. There are little paintings on the walls. And um, yeah, and um, like this, many houses looked before. And uh, just going back to the wines, because we already talked about the reds, but maybe you could also introduce the, the white or what you cultivate and what's maybe so typical in the region. Yeah, my um, favorite white variety is um, Riesling. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I'm very um, traditional and classic what that. Um, what <laughs> yeah, because Riesling has such a fresh acidity and freshness and um, a ripe peach in the nose and a little bit apricot and it um, yeah, you can drink yeah it's just such drinky and you can produce nice uh, sweet wines out of Riesling it's so diverse and you can um, age um, white wines um, with that varieties and they have good potential for that yeah but th this is um, our most important white um, variety but um, it's coming or in trend, or the young people, they prefer the Pinot varieties like Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, mm -hmm. yeah, and Pinot Blanc. And why do you think it is? Why? Yeah. Because they are um, not so, uh, they have not so much acidity. They are very smooth and uh, creamy in the mouth. Yeah, they have mm -hmm. a, a soft mouth feeling and they are very fruity and um, yeah, I think Easily that's the cause. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are easier to take, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, and um, I really like them too. Yeah, I'm open for different wines, and for every situation, you have uh, the right wine. <laughs> and um, yeah, so Grauburgunder is very important for us, Pinot Gris, and um, we are also um, known for our um, bouquet varieties like uh, Muscatella. Yeah, mm -hmm. Muscat um, is also international known, I guess. Muscatella, um, when you smell, you have a lot of different flowers and it's like a bunch of flowers when you... <laughs> yeah, a lot of terpenes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. And it's very fruity. And we have it semi-dry because um, sugar transports the aroma a little bit better. When you make it totally dry, yeah, you, yeah, you have not the same nose in the end. Mm -hmm. So um, you need a little bit sugar to um, get a full the... aroma mm -hmm. in the end. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is very important for us. Um, and also Muscat Trollinger, it's a red grape variety, but we make only a rosé wine out of it. And um, yeah, our rosé wines in general, they are very light in color because we prefer not so much tannin in the um, rosé wines. We, we prefer to have an elegant and um, light rosé wine. Yeah, Muscat Trollinger, there you have more the exotic fruits in, in the wine and um, you can serve it to uh, sweet sour um, uh, dishes like um, the Asian uh, um, food style. And yeah, it's very interesting, these two varieties and they are very loud yeah, in aroma and uh, you get so much, um, such a <laughs> intensive nose and uh, and we make them semi-dry. Yeah, this is um, coming up a lot and the young people, you, I think you, sometimes the people say they don't drink wine in general and then I say they uh, did not drink the right one <laughs> <laughs> till now so uh, probably you can uh, um, give them a bouquet variety like Muscatella, Muscatollinger and then uh, yeah just to get into in. the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes they go to Riesling and Grauburgunder mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. during my studies um, we uh, talked about wine and um, decided 
and ask the others, shall we drink a cubby? So we call them um, the easy quality cubby. Mm -hmm. It's the cabinet, our um, yeah, predicat, um, our German predicat. So um, it's a indicator of a light wine with not so much um, alcohol and it's easy drinking. And um, yeah, it don't um, closes your mouth or <laughs> yeah. I don't know, mm -hmm. it don't closes up. Yeah. If I would say also the German labels are maybe not the easiest to read. Just looking at like Hellbronner, that's probably everyone knows. Yeah, so I um, give you uh, information about the label. Yeah. This is our logo and you always um, should um, make, sh make sure if it's a winery or if it's a cooperative. When there is a wine good written on it, um, you know it's a little boutique um, yeah, production. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there you have the vintage, it's 2018. And Heilbronner Stahlbühl is the site. Yeah. Heilbronn is the town, and then you have uh, the specification at yeah, the site. Mm -hmm. yeah, where we talked about before, we have three sites, and this is our site for white um, grape varieties. And then you have the variety, and um, with the predicate, in former times we had um, cabinet, spätlese, auslese, trockenbieren, auslese, and um, so on. And cabinet is um, after the quality wine, yeah, the next um, yeah, step. And it's a very easy drinking wine with not so much alcohol. Mm -hmm. And um, it depends um, of the um, sugar gradient in the grapes um, during harvesting time. Yeah, and then... Uh, this the, is what you call Oechsle, right? Yeah, yeah. That's and it's differing from region to region, right? And variety from variety. Yeah, and oh. yeah because the Mosel area is a little bit cooler and... Um, and they have lower level yeah. requirements, right? Riesling is the variety which um, tells you of the region, mm -hmm. because Riesling, it tells from the region mm -hmm. where um, the Speaks wines... Speaks the terroir. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's true, yeah, yeah. The um, freaks or during our studies, um, we had blind tastings and um, yeah, you really can taste where the Riesling comes from. And this is our original Riesling from our um, region. Yeah, and um, the acidity is different, um, I would say. And also you can taste the Mosel Rieslings, they um, have the soil slates, mm -hmm. slate stone soil, and you can really taste it in the wine. And how would yeah. you distinguish maybe this one from a, a Mosel Riesling? Yeah, the nose is totally taste. different. You have um, uh, a lot of apple in the Mosel Rieslings, and um, yeah, you have a more the yeast, the yeast nose mm -hmm. i would um, say yeah and here you have fresh peach yeah, yeah true, very yeah. ripe peach, peach yeah. Yeah, and a little bit apricot yeah. yeah and probably also apple and peach yeah but it depends it's totally yeah, it's, but it's riper yeah. you can yeah. tell and maybe less mineralic on the nose less yeah. saltiness but the appearance of the acidity is totally different yeah mm -hmm. it's um so let's taste it so yeah really mm -hmm. on the nose it's really riper on the riper mm -hmm. side, even though it's only only a cabinet, so to say. And it stays a long time mm -hmm. in the nose, in the mouth, yeah. And I really like it that um, you have the acidity in the end and it makes it a little bit salty. Yeah, and so fresh and you can just take the second sip. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. It's really ripe yeah. phenolics and also really ripe acidity. It's not like screaming what it scrapes your mouth, yeah. but it's really just... <laughs> stimulates your, your saliva, so to say. So it really yeah. makes you... <laughs> makes that's for a good, another yeah, that's drink. a good point, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, from our basic line and um, you should drink it very fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. you should always have the fresh, uh, the, the current vintage and um, don't um, age it in your cellar. Yeah, it's not necessary. It's now percent and now on its best. It's not going to yeah. develop, right? But it's what's your approach in terms of winemaking when you Go to Rieslings. We do every second year a Riesling um, which is um, sweet and therefore we um, stop the fermentation mm -hmm. and you have a lot of fructose um, as a sugar component and um, yeah and it's very interesting how a sweet Riesling wines age yeah? and you can drink it longer. Our goal with Riesling and we do a, yeah this is our basic line and we have um, a big body the Riesling, a spätlese quality. Okay. Yeah, it's um, just um, 
a good um, you can serve it with food and this yeah. Yeah, but this was only in stainless steel right yeah only stainless steel that's our um, style my father mm -hmm. used to um, vinify all our white wines in stainless steel and um, I started in 2015 to um, um, make my own wine and one wine my first project was um, uh, Chardonnay in wood, yeah, in a 500 liter barrack, so it's called Tonneau uh -huh. barrel. But the fermentation was not in barrack, but it, just was, the, in f it was in the barrack. The fermentation yeah. also, wow. You need to do it for the white wine because okay. otherwise the wood, wood um, is not so good um, involved in the mm -hmm. wine. Or yeah, During the fermentation, yeah, it's reductive because um, yeah, you have the yeast and, and after the fermentation, you can do a little bit batonnage to keep it uh, reductive. Okay. You, you need to play with the yeast uh, when you um, vinify something mm -hmm. in, a, in a wood, yeah, with white wine to um, um, involve the um, rosy aroma of the wood and, and um, tannins of the wood better in the wine. And in terms of yeast, do you use native yeast or selected? Um, we uh, um, use cultured yeast um, for our, our most wines, and we do some projects or some uh, wines with a spontaneous fermentation mm -hmm. with the wild yeast from the vineyard. Mm -hmm. That was also part of my project when I came home. Um, I vinified um, the Chardonnay in a 500 liter barrack and did a fermentation spontaneously with the wild yeast from the vineyard so I mm -hmm. filled it up to the top with the must okay. and then I just waited for the fermentation but you have to be sure that you have 100% um, healthy grape um, um, mm -hmm. and no rotten grapes at all and not a bad um, microflora from the vineyard um, yeah we uh, pick all our grapes by hand so um, okay. we have the first selection of um, the quality in the vineyard and our aim is to produce just um, yeah, healthy mm -hmm. grapes. You produce the quality of the wines actually in the vineyard. In the cellar you just um, do the, you just yeah. control the wines the, and... Yeah. Um, just to polish what yeah, you had. <laughs> yeah, and, um, yeah. and Riesling was it now a nice and easy drinking start. I always use it for the tasting yeah, as the entry and um, the entry is, of course, a sparkling wine, but then mm -hmm. the second <laughs> wine, yeah. And uh, now we have uh, Pinot Gris, like Carbogon um, is the German name for it. And uh, it's much big body, yeah? and you see the color is mm -hmm. um, a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah. true. It's more, it's more, but it's also some oxidation, or? It's, I smell. No, it's, it's because of the vintage. Normally, um, our Pinot Gris, they are light in color. Mm -hmm. But um, when you see the grapes, they are colored, actually. Mm -hmm. You can uh, probably... Grau is the name for yeah, grape, right, yeah, yeah, because the, these are white grapes, but actually they are colored in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. But you lose the color in the process um, of the winemaking. But um, when you do some maturation, as I mentioned before, when you have a berry, the pulp is completely colorless and the color stays only in the skin. Mm -hmm. So. When um, we uh, pick the grapes and um, mash them, so um, yeah, we uh, crush the grapes so that the juice bursts out. And um, when you do a little, little maceration with the mash, after you crush them, mm -hmm. you um, you um, get some, you solve some color from the skin. Mm -hmm. And um, when you press them afterwards, yeah, you you have a colored must. But when you're very fast in the, um, when you do no maceration of the mesh and you um, transfer them immediately to the press and press them, you don't gain gain any color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it depends how you would treat the grapes um, during harvesting time. And the winter 2018. Oh, this is 18. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong bottle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was very, very hot, and so the maceration started already in the vineyard. Okay. Yeah, and you you could not get rid of the color. Yeah, you have, and the color is an indicator of um, Gerbstoffe or of mm -hmm. tannins, and it makes it big barrier and gives it more structure and more complexity. But um, you also lose a little bit um, elegance. Yeah. And this is like a compromise, yeah. This is um, not much color for this vintage, yeah. The name of the wine is Johanna, 
this is my sister. We have the our premium line of the white wines is our sister line. Uh, it's, we are in the third generation, three sisters. So my mother were three sisters, my grandmother. And um, we established this line in 2003. Probably you can um, remember we had a very, very hot summer and um, yeah, over 40 degrees um, yeah, some days. And we had uh, very high qualities in the cellar and the um, cabinet and Spätlese, Auslese um, were, was not ima enough for us to, um, because we had such good quality wines in the cellar. And um, so we gave them some names to, um, yeah, to escape the normal cl classification line because it was no more representative for these qualities. And my father, um, yeah, gave um, the wines our names and decided the varieties after our character. After okay. the character of the wine is a kind of a character of uh, us. So, um, yeah, Johanna is uh, is very. She is starting the revolution. <laughs> has a big, a good character and um, edges, and um, she always knows um, what she wants and is going for straight forward and. Um, I think the wine represents that. <laughs> but so. I don't see any wines on the table with your name. So what's, what, <laughs> what's your line about? Yeah, in 2003, <laughs> I was a sweet Riesling wine. Okay. Yeah, it was Edelsies. And um, yeah, I think that time I was very sweet and little. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I um, joined our company, I decided to make my own wines. Now I'm adult and I want to be a dry wine in the end. <laughs> So I made my project out of my wine and I, yeah, I fermented um, the Chardonnay in wood spontaneously and that was that is now my wine. Mm -hmm. And I blended it with um, Pinot Blanc, um, vinified in stainless steel and Pinot Blanc gives it the freshness, the elegance and the, filig the filigrane style mm -hmm. and the Chardonnay gives it a big body and um, mm -hmm. yeah, deepness and um, a long life in the end. So it's a blend 50-50. Uh, that was my own choice in the end. Yeah, yes. But Johanna was always Pinot Gris and it's like yeah. a brand of our house okay. and we have it, um, we sell it to the restaurants in the region. Yeah, They really like Johanna because you can serve it good with food. Yeah. Exactly. You can pair it yeah. um, easily, and um, Pinot Gris is um, known everywhere. And um, yeah, actually, what just came into my mind is uh, Ananas Pinot Gris because it's also just as I tasted and I also smelled it. It's also almost tropical fruit, as you also mentioned. It was a very warm year, mm -hmm. but it it has just enough acidity just to keep the freshness. But the the aftertaste it's really not coming from the acidity or, or in my It's mouth. more creamy in the yeah, end. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Very not soft. Not like the riesling, mm -hmm. but it's um, I would say almost pineapple-y or um, really almost tropical fruits, but really. Yeah, I'm with you with pineapple. Yeah, and it stayed so a long that's... time on the yeast, so. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we have also, the characteristic of the yeast yeah. and deepness, and yeah. Um, yeah, there's a character. Yeah, that's what. Uh, when I looked at the at the wine, I would I would have guessed that it's an older and maybe oxidized wine, but it's it's on the palate. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's different than in the appearance. But yeah. I also you can taste some bouquet for sure. The yeastiness is also present, but it's not creamy like. Mm. Not that too, not too creamy. It's really a very well balanced wine. Mm. Yeah, some um, um, Pinot Gris of 2018 they look like rosé wines. Mm -hmm. When you um, yeah taste other wines from other wineries, our is uh, not so deep in color for this vintage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we were um, with the climate change, we uh, um, have different uh, problems, or yeah, we need to. Uh, develop with the climate change um, because um, yeah we need to change the vinification and uh, the way you treat the grapes and, and how does it really affect you or what what do um, you have to we change? never had such deep color in pinot gris before because in the maceration already started in a vineyard so mm -hmm. um yeah you the extraction of the color in the must and um 
in cooler vintages um, when you are fast um, in the transferation transferation of the grapes and you don't gain any color yeah and that's our style of Pinot Gris and so um, we learn with every vintage also my father he's um, making wines for um, 30 years now but he's still learning yeah mm -hmm. it's a process yeah. <laughs> and do you see that it's only in these years or do you see that it's it's going to be a constant tendency and you have to adapt yourself and it's a constant mm -hmm. as a, I think um, yeah we can't um, in future we have to plant different varieties yeah. for example the, what, what we the planted um, last year or two years ago um, Cabernet Franc on the Wattberg yeah and I think this, okay. this is a good variety here because um, the wines stay um, stay for 30 to 40 years when you treat the vineyard well and mm -hmm. the training system then you can have um, a long time good yield and um, grapes of it and you have to uh, look what are the conditions um, yeah in future yeah so in 2015 we have in average, um, the global warms up two degrees, but in our region we have four and a half degrees more wow. because it's the average temperature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because no one really gets it. I yeah. guess. Yeah, they talk about the average average degree global. So um, yeah, I think we have um, the conditions of Spain in future. Mm -hmm. But um, it's good that our soils can have such a good water capacity. They can um, um, save the water, the water mm -hmm. maintain the water. So, um, yeah, I think that's not a problem. And uh, my grandfather says with the climate change, we can make such good red wines. <laughs> uh, the Lemberger of 2080s, they are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. They are so nice. Uh, mm -hmm. So what's the next in the glass? Because yeah, was... now um, we have a rosé wine. I just want to show you the diversity um, okay. in the styles. Wine. <laughs> yeah, this is um, the wine we talked about before, the variety. It's mm -hmm. Muscat Trollinger. Um, yeah, in the name you have the Trollinger, but it's not related to our red grape variety Trollinger. It, the international name for it is Muscat Alexandria. Probably you heard about that. Mm -hmm. Um, you get this wine only in our region. It's very old variety, but it's coming up again. Yeah, yeah, we lost it for some years, and um, yeah, it's a cocktail in the glass, and it's such um, in uh, intensive, in intensive variety. Yeah, you have a bouquet of um, fruit salad or of um, yeah exotic fruits. Yeah, and a little bit lychee. Yeah, very much lychee. Yeah. No, so much yes, maybe so maracuya much. and a yeah. lot of lot of exotic yeah. things. And it's um, vinified no. semi-dry, uh, but um, the surprise is that also the dry, um, the people who drink only dry they drink this wine because it's so special and um, you can't compare it to other wines. It's um, for itself um, <laughs> a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and our style of rosé wine in general is very light in color. We don't want the strong tannins because they, yeah, they make it. Um, we want the elegance in the wine, and with the tannins, you have big bodied and um, edges, and we don't want that in rosé wines. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and you can have it as an aperitif, or you can serve it um, as a dessert. But you need a very fruity dessert uh, with a lot of fruits because it's not so sweet. Um, it's no. semi-sweet. No, it's not. But you can. It's the 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 residual sugar is palpable. So how how many residual sugar do you have? We have in twenty this grams. Um, 20. But uh, when we but we need not, it because yeah. it transports all the yeah. aroma. It's so loud. Yeah, and but it also it has enough acidity to counterpart because sometimes when what I miss in German, I'm I don't have anything against sweet wines, but mm -hmm. sometimes also maybe lower priced German wines they have a lot of a lot of residual sugar, but just not enough acidity to to keep the wine fresh. But this mm. the wines are living off the acidity, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's boring without acidity. Yeah, and it's like um, you when you bite in a grape in a berry. Really, it's the True. same uh, taste. Yeah. And we try to keep the aroma transported from the grapes in the wine. So we slow down the fermentation until the, so that um, we don't lose the aroma yeah, during the fermentation. And um, so we have all the fruit from the vineyard in this bottle. And 
the um, nice part of this variety is that um, the ripeness of the berries at one on one bunch of grape um, are in different um, ripeness levels. Mm -hmm. yeah, the berries um, have different maturity levels on a grape and um, we pick the grapes a little bit um, before full ripeness so that some berries are still a little bit red and some berries are deep blue in color. So we have um, the wide range uh, of um, aroma later on in the wine because um, yeah, the red berries, they still have a fresher acidity and the deep blue berries, they have the um, full amount of the majority aroma. On, yeah, yeah, that's true actually because I also, uh, I thought at the first sip I was, uh, I maybe drank too much or too little, but it was, <laughs> uh, I really, s like what I taste is strawberry. Yeah, raspberry. Raspberry, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's that's what I taste. It's because like now a... it warms up. Now yeah, we have true. lychee and maracuya yeah. a lot. And when it warms up, you have raspberry and strawberry. That's yeah, true. true. But if I would have tasted it blind, I would also maybe said, also maybe on the maracuya and like the, the greener and the, the yellower side of the exotic fruit so mm -hmm. maracuya has a lot of acidity too so that's so i just wanted yeah. to show you this wine maybe mandarin and it's yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy yeah. and <laughs> when it you is. keep yeah. on tasting yeah. you have so yeah. many yeah. different yeah. fruits it's really a fruit salad yeah <laughs> we should name that <laughs> yeah and we do only rosé wine out of it because for a red um, wine it is too fruity for us such a game in a red wine <laughs> yeah, so. now we have um, a red wine it's a blend So what's in the glass now? <laughs> now we have um, Privatkeller in our glass. It's one of um, our one red wine of our premium line, and it's a red blend. It's um, out of ninety percent Lemberger, it's our most important red grape variety, as we um, talked before, and ten percent Samtrot. Yeah, the Samtrot makes um, gives it a smooth and nice finish, and Lemberger gives the strength and mm -hmm. yeah, the big body and the fire in the mouth. Yeah. It's 2017, right? Yeah, yeah. 17. It's um, very young on the bottle, so mm -hmm. it's um, aged a little bit longer in the cellar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it has edges and it's very fresh for a red wine, but um, you see very deep color and it's a yeah, big body so it's... and very herby. The mm -hmm. nose is very herby and the mm -hmm. tannins are still very... Uh, yeah, fresh and um, the wine has edges, but it's so dry. We had the sweet wine before, it's so really um, bone dry, yeah. yeah. But you, it's so fruity too. You have the blackberries a little bit. Yeah, cherry fruit is um, typical it's for Lemberger, yeah. and um, a little bit cassis, and it stays such a long time in the mouth. And also the tannins, but you said it's also maybe because of the sun throat, but they they are really ripe. But it's a, a hint of black pepper, like. A a pure pure scene, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's black really pepper is a good um, yeah, yeah. attribute. It's um, yeah important for our Lemberger, that black pepper and cherry fruit. And it's almost, I would say, like Cabernet Sauvignon, but it's a, a, li a little bit lighter Cab mm -hmm. Cabernet Sauvignon, or a bit of Syrah, but wow, really, yeah. really nice. And really a lot of spices and herbs on the nose. Yeah. And how was the winemaking? Did had it for one year in the barriques. Mm -hmm. Some were first use and second use of the barrique. So you have the toasty aroma of the you know, barriques too mm -hmm. in the wine a little bit, but it just covers it a little bit. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's I don't really smell like this vanilla and tobacco. No, Maybe no. Maybe a little bit of we only have fresh leather, but French wood, so um, with fresh. little little pores and just um, the best quality mm -hmm. wood. Yeah, we don't want too much um, oxygen in the wine. It's just micro oxidation and yeah. And the Lemberger is um, of the Wartberg um, side, south face, and a lot of um, sunshine hours. And that's what Lemberger loves. And we should um, go abroad and show the others our Lemberger because that's um, what we um, know and the best. Yeah. <laughs> Lemberger, you can compare it to other wines. What do you think about it? From the black pepper aroma, or I would say this Cabernet Sauvignon and maybe Cabernet Franc, but I would say it's a little less tonic than these varieties. 
but be, because we also have Lamburger in Hungary. Yeah. Uh, Kek Frankos. Kek Frankos, yeah. yeah. And uh, mm. I also tasted a lot of Blau Frankish when I was studying and uh, I worked in, in Austria. But it has a lot more power, I would say, than a, a typical Austrian one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get a lot of yield of Lamberger too. And we minimized um, the yield mm -hmm. and we um, half were halving the grapes. Okay. So um, to get um, more complexity in the wine mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. And a better aroma. Yeah. Lamberger are big grapes. Uh, yeah. And um, we have only the best sites for Lamberger in former times. Um, yeah. L they planted Trollinger on the best sites uh, mm -hmm. because it was the variety where you get the, the most money from, I think. And um, we uh, changed the system. We do a lot of work in the vineyards and half the grapes and minimize the yield. And um, I think that's why we have so much complexity and such a deep um, and big bodied wine. And this is our premium line, and we have, of course, in, in our a basic line, Lemberger. It's not so deep in color and um, softer, and um, yeah. You harvested it earlier, or what? what or the maceration was short? We have different uh, vineyards of Lemberger, and our best sites go in the premium mm -hmm. wines, and the sites which are, or Got for the basic sunlight. wines, we uh, take more yields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our best red wines, they are actually blends because we want to be free and we want to um, choose the best barrels go in our best uh, wines. And sometimes now, vintage 2017, we have 90% Lemberg and 10% Samtot, but in some years it, uh, it's different. It yeah, we mm -hmm. change it. We want to adopt it because... Um, um, every vintage is so different also with climate change. Every third year is very hot year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 18 was so hot, 15, uh, 2003 was so hot. Yeah, so three, six, six was, I think, um, yeah, you can skip that. Yeah, but uh, 2009, 12, 15, 18 was so hot. Mm -hmm. I think in future we get more hot and warm summers. Yeah, we only do um, these big bodied wines in the best vintages we ran out of um, red wines i would have loved to keep them longer in barracks but um we had to um, bottle <laughs> so <laughs> what an unfortunate scenario <laughs> yeah it's still very very young but yeah i love it yeah but it's it's mm. really approachable already yeah uh, and we have um a more complex a complexer blend um, of um, Lemberger and Pinot Noir. It's our Löwenherz blend and um, this is um, good to drink it young too mm -hmm. and you can age it a little as you prefer because it's the acidity and the edges um, turns or uh, develop or turn smoother with aging and uh, Löwenherz is uh, made to store it a little bit in the cellar. Nice, mm. beautiful wine. And we have also, also a Spätburgunder, yeah, 2017. Yeah, this is um, Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. or from, the, from the same vintage, 2017. Some people say in the Württemberg area they don't do well in Pinot Noir, but I think we have uh, good vineyards for Pinot Noir, and we should try it <laughs> <laughs> now. <Please. laughs> yeah. And so just um, before we try it, uh, because you mentioned this event already and also the three daughters. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about your event? Yeah, events about wine, to communicate wine, to bring uh, wine to young people. And there are a lot of wine events and wine festivals in our region, but um, a lot of them are old fashioned and uh, they are very static or the people, they uh, take um, a seat and um, stay there the whole day, <laughs> night through. So I wanted to um, make a young concept uh, to, um, because um, our town Heilbronn, um, we have a lot of um, people who move um, to Heilbronn for their work or um, to study. So um, to show them the beautiful sights of our town, I established this event and uh, to open our winery. And because a lot of customers, they um, buy their wines now in the supermarket. 80% of German wines um, are bought in supermarkets. And I reflected myself in New Zealand, how um, I consume and how I move in another region. And um, our generation um, 
has no more a big seller. And in former times, the customers came to our winery and bought um, the wines for the whole year at once. And now they buy like um, two bottles when they um, have a nice dinner um, in the night, same day. So they go to the supermarket and buy uh, all the stuff they need at once. But um, that the people get to know our winery, probably they are ashamed to buy just one or two bottles in our house. And so uh, um, yeah, they don't come to our winery, they buy it in the supermarket. But um, that they get to know our house, I wanted to open the doors once a month to um, yeah, invite them to uh, see the production and see where the product comes from and how we work and um, show them our philosophy and what's different um, of, of the winemaking of us to others. And so um, yeah, that was my aim. And now we, uh, um, uh, it takes um, place once a month in the last Thursday of the month um, from 17 o'clock to uh, tw 20 to 10 o'clock and we uh, call it after work and I wanted to personalize it and call it after work with Viola, <laughs> like um, yeah, me, <laughs> but um, yeah, and the whole family is here and um, there is food and wine uh, and um, there's al always a topic. So we uh, have cheese and wine and we have piano and wine and we uh, have herbs and wine and um, we uh, are used to cooperate with local little companies like um, a conditorei or um, a cho chocolatier from the region. So um, the, the partner, they bring also their customers to our house. And so we get new people and uh, we create a good atmosphere here with um, the slogan is a little bit, uh, you feel like at home. Yeah, you, you can grab a wine and um, uh, make yourself comfortable like, um, yeah at home and you can uh, come as you are yeah you can come immediately after work in your dress like you yeah you work every day and we do it very personally my my parents are here my sister they support it totally they invite their friends and it's because we are so small we get a lot of um people ask us uh, to um, join tastings or to uh, come with little groups and yeah our time uh, is endless or um, we have not so much employees so we just say to them come to the after work and there we all we are all together and um, yeah you, you can taste the different wines and have a look at our winery and we do tours through, through the whole production and I show them how we work it's I think it's a good platform to communicate our wines and um, show diff show new wines to the customers and um, establish new wines and um, and that was the aim and I think it um, turns out very well. Yeah, my parents, they had no capacity to do a lot of tastings in former times, but now I'm at home and there is um, more manpower here. Mm -hmm. And um, and I really, uh, I'm really passionate in doing that and the people like it. And you can't um, have an employee which does it because he can't transport um, the message like you, you mm. said. And I also saw a lot of paintings here in the, in the winery. And I think it's a really beautiful way to present wine next to art or in, uh, in context to art, because it's also a work of art, what you just showed me so far. It, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really a wine, a work of art. And yeah, it's all cultural, all things you need to enjoy and which um, enriches your life, I guess. Yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah, we have our walls. Uh, we have a little exhibition of art yeah, yeah. and we do uh, exhibitions temporary. We um, give our walls to different um, artists, um, hobby artists or professionals. Um, yeah, we don't mind. So let's taste the Pinot Noir. <laughs> of course. It's lighter in color mm -hmm. than the um, Privat Keller, of course. When someone asks you um, which wine is in the class and you do a blind tasting, you uh, can recognize the Pinot, red Pinot varieties. When you look from the top, um, in, when, you, when you look in the class and mm -hmm. you see the, the border of the wine is um, Brown, colorless, yeah. colorless, yeah. you yeah. see it's um, like, like water. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then you know that it's a Pinot variety. Yeah? Oh, okay. Lemberger is totally colored. 
but it really shows a, a wide range of colors. I mean, it goes to brown and yeah. then it's in the really middle, it's transparent. Deep, yeah, yeah, and then the it rim. goes transparent. And yeah. in the end, it's completely like, um, yeah, like water. Mm. It's mm -hmm. more complex, I would say, on the nose. It's, it's not that fruity than the... Yeah, it's more plump and yeah. um, dried fruits. Yeah. And it's fresher in acidity. And it's a little bit lighter. You yeah. can chill it a little, but I prefer to have it like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's really luscious. It's quite big bodied for a Pinot Noir. A really cherry like acidity, but it's really ripe, only ripe fruits. So it just do the malolactic fermentation and stainless steel. Mm -hmm. And then it um we transfer it in a barrique. On the palate it I would say it's more black food than yeah, it's still very, very young. When yeah, I, I, yeah, I would really age it well, but yeah. I would really age it for at least three years. Yeah, and it's from old wines. They're older than 30 years, so you get less yield and um, a complexer wines. Uh, they have still, when it's a dry vintage, they have still access to water and um, they, are, they have all the nutrition they need and the roots are very deep. So you can do the best wines out of... Um, old vineyards. We had um, to uh, replant um, some vineyards because of um, bad conditions to um, yeah, to cultivate the, the vineyards. Mm -hmm. So that were causes to um, build up new vineyards. Yeah. But uh, the vineyards we plant now, you want to keep them as long as possible. When you treat the training system well and um, your trunks and your wines, you can keep them over 40 years old. And that's our goal, yeah. And you work conventional, like uh, in terms of spraying or do you...? Yes, yeah. We have a certification of sustainability and uh, we try to um, get better, do better in the vineyard to uh, work um, most sustainable in the end. And the organic wine making is not sustainable. That fact or, yeah, they have to um, drive um, the double um, amount um, with a tractor yeah they have more fossil um, environment pollution and um, there are better ways to work sustainable but um, yeah the organics work very well yeah but we want to make something in between yeah okay. we face uh, we want to improve in that um, case but um, organic is not um, perfect at the moment and we work on us and um, a lot of things are changing and um, we improve every year. With the certification we have um, to improve 3%, we, um, it um, involves the economic part, the ecological part and the social part. The organic label or certification is only the e ecological part. Of course we work on all the three parts and we need to improve 3% um, every year. And so we uh, um, bottle our wines now in lighter bottles because um, the production of um, bottle making makes a lot of emissions. There's a lot of CO2 emission. So we uh, try to um, get better in these things. Yeah. And also in the vineyard, of course. Yeah, We want to um, get um, away from the habit seat. So we uh, bought now new machineries for the tractor to uh, make it mechanically to um, um, remove the herb, mm -hmm. herbs and the, the rose mechanically. But um, it, it takes time and we need to um, try what's the best way for us. And how would you compare it maybe to a New Zealand Pinot Noir? Because you've been to New Zealand. Yeah, I've been in the um, in Malibu re region. It's on the South Island in the north um, west of the South Island. And it's famous for its um, um, Sauvignon Blanc course yeah, they do mainly Sauvignon Blanc mm -hmm. and they have like 10% um, Pinot Noir. Yeah, New Zealand is cool climate, you get very fresh red wines and um, very elegant red wines. And I think here we are a little bit warmer than New Zealand. In terms of winemaking, because you worked in a winery, right? Yeah, yeah I worked at a winery, but it was the size of the cooperative in our region, so it was huge. And they called themselves um, family estate, so okay. they are better in uh, marketing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I worked... Um, only in the cellar, so it's more like a um, kellerei, like um, they do only the vinification and they have contracts with the grape producer. It's not a winery. In Germany, you, you were not allowed to call it winery or they have good contracts and they have um, 
they buy the grapes. They um, harvest it all by a machine yeah, mm-hmm. with the harvester. The uh, nice part in Germany is that we have a lot of boutique wineries and when you uh, do some internship at a winery here, yeah, you uh, are involved in all the part of the winemaking process. Yeah. You are in the vineyard and do all the vinification, vinification. and uh, cultivation of the grape. You are um, in the vinification in the cellar and do the enology and you do the distribution and the events and you do you are involved in all the parts mm-hmm. of it. In New Zealand you you were only in the enology and you got to know only a little part of the winemaking process because um, every intern specialize in a special thing and then you do it the whole harvest over but it uh, was very nice we had um, 35 um, different um, uh, interns at our winery it was huge and, um, some supervisors they were like the second or third year at this at this winery over the harvesting time mm-hmm. you had um, the choice um, to go to the white wine cellar red wine cellar reception or do the filtration so I learned a lot, um, not so much about winemaking, but because you were not involved in all the processes, but um, I learned a lot about um, how you treat employees and interns, how you um, motivate them. And um, it was so much fun. And um, it was like a party every day in the cellar and we had mm-hmm. music and they were so nice um, to us. Do you also have been a Sauvignon Blanc in this region or at the winery or uh, is it really uncommon? Here in Württemberg or in Baden? Uh, we planted three years ago Sauvignon Blanc. We had the first vintage, uh, the first um, yield last um, in 2018, but it was a, a little amount and we sold it um, very fast mm-hmm. out. So in 2019, we get the full yield. Yeah, we got it already, but um, we bought it in April, May. So mm-hmm. I. Um, and do you think it suits well? or it... We have a very nice um, site along the forest in the northeast of Heilbronn, close okay. to the Jägerhaus. It's a restaurant. It's like where the hunters um, meet up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, during the day, you get the cold air from the forest and it runs mm-hmm. down the vineyard. Mm-hmm. So you, you have quite cool climate and that's good for Sauvignon. We want not the reductive style of Sauvignon. Sauvignon has two phases. We uh, like to have it o- more the oxidative way and we do the vinification more with oxygen. We have it still on the yeast and um, it's um, a, com- a different style but um, you have so much gooseberry in it. It's so good. Yeah, you should try it. It's good to taste it in the cellar right so now. So it's not really under <laughs> cat pee and freshly cut grass, but... Uh, no, uh, it's more the gooseberry and uh, lychee and mm-hmm. um, yeah, you have mm-hmm. also the creams aromas. It's interesting, yeah. I yeah. love the diversity in, uh, um, in, in the wines and... Um, varieties <laughs> and how you can play with it right like because yeah. you can play with it in the, yeah. in the wine making so and some vintages are good for this variety and it depends yeah. uh, okay viola so thank you very much for all the wines we tasted all the interesting food for thought <laughs> so to say and your experiences and really looking forward for the next vintages thank you very much you're welcome it was nice to have you here <laughs> <laughs> see you soon see you so how did you like this episode Look for the Wine Ghosts on Instagram to find easy ways to get in contact with Viola and book your next tasting at the Kisling Wine Cave or fill your New Year's calendar with Viola's after events. Right after Christmas, I visit new Wine Ghosts and three ancient volcanoes just above Lake Balaton, Hungary. The Balaton upland is home to powerful wild vines of indigenous varieties, ancient legends and castle ruins, not to mention passionate winemakers, of course. Follow the Wine Ghost Instagram stories to get a hidden look inside their wine caves along my tour. Till then, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and some memorable wines to share with your family at the table. I will definitely post our Christmas wines on the Instagram side and I want you to do the same under my post. Wine is here to share and enjoy with loved ones and there is no better time of the year to do that. Happy Holidays and thanks for listening. Cheers, Mate.